Hey, good morning. Uh, so today what I wanted to do is talk to you about a subject that's near and dear to my heart and, and probably the most important uh, piece of me as an officer selection officer, uh, which is officer candidate school and, and graduating officer candidate school. Uh, some of you guys right now are probably wondering if you have what it takes to succeed at OCS. Uh, some of you guys are wondering what failure at OCS looks like. And what I hope to do in the next couple minutes is, is address some of those issues and, and maybe give you something to think about. But uh, before I start into going into uh, Officer Candidate School, why people fail and whatnot, uh, let me tell you that attrition rate at OCS, it's about between 25 and 30 percent. Now, I'm not talking about average individuals that are picking, that are, that are taken from the streets and are taken and put into Officer Candidate School. I'm talking about people that were selective through a very competitive board at Officer Candidate School and you still have 25% to 30% of those fail at OCS. So why is that? It's the question I hope to answer and even better yet is, is what do you have what it takes or what you can do to improve your chances at, at, for success at Officer Candidate School. So let me kind of uh, go back a little bit and tell you that, let me go over the process just, just real quick because this is gonna this has a lot to do with, with whether you're gonna succeed at OCS or not. You have to understand that by the time you're at Officer Candidate School, you've already demonstrated you have the academic aptitude to succeed there. You're either a college graduate or going to college, you have a 2.0 GPA, and somewhere along your application, somebody's seen that you have what it takes to compete at, at, at a and OCS is 10th grade level academics. Um, in Orange County, I prepare my guys academically, but I'm telling you right now, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of candidates that have graduated OCS with no academic preparation. You've dem demonstrated you have what it takes just based off of your school, either a college graduate or your college classes. So as far as the academic portion, you already have that. Let's talk about the PT portion. At Officer Candidate School, in order for you to pick up training, in order to start training, you have to run a minimum of a 220 PFT. Take your little calculator, check, check out what the 220 means, but it's really not that high. It's really not that bad of a physical fitness test. If you can meet the 220, you will, you will what we call induct into training, which means that you will start training, uh, training day one, okay? So now you're a candidate, you've inducted, you ran a 221 PFT, you have no academic preparation. The question now is, can you succeed at OCS? And I'm telling you right now, yes, you can. And this is why I'm telling you this. And, and the main reason why people quit. I'm gonna tell you, uh, right now, the main reason why people quit, it's not really academics. Yeah, you're gonna have those that, that don't do as well in academics and score in the 80%. Uh, also, Physical fitness, yeah, you're gonna have some guys that can't pass, or and girls that can't pass the the uh, the uh, the hikes, the the endurance course, and whatnot. And you have a lot of medical drops, and you have a lot of DOR. So the majority of drops at OCS are medical, drop on request, academic, and physical fitness, well, and leadership, right? Uh, so why do I think that all you guys can pass? Well, I'm gonna tell you why. And again, I use my experience as a, as a sergeant instructor, as, as, in, as an OSO, and, and just what I've seen throughout the years. What happens at Officer Candidate School is people are, are studying at their house, they're getting ready for OCS, but what, what you, what a lot of applicants don't replicate, they don't replicate the lack of sleep. They don't replicate you being homesick. You don't replicate being sick, period, right? Because you're surrounded by a whole bunch of individuals. So now picture this, an individual doesn't feel well, he's homesick, lack of sleep, your study habits are going to suffer. They're going to suffer. So how do you overcome that? I'm gonna get to that. Same thing for the PT. You can be a, a, a stud. You can be a stud out here running a 290 PFT. You can, you can be an 18 minute three miler. So how can you fail the endurance course? Well, because you don't anticipate being sick. You don't anticipate having a sore body. You don't anticipate none of that because back home, you heal up. After a, a, a tough PT session, you go back to your house, 
you drink some Gatorade, go to sleep, play some freaking at PlayStation, and that's it. OCS, you don't do that. OCS, you have to keep going. Uh, and, 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 and same thing for drop on Why do people drop on requests? Well, I'm going to get into that right now. And then the medical portion. Uh, that's the other reason I want to get into uh, uh, here in a little bit. And I'm going to and I'm gonna kind of group everything together. And I'm going to tell you the main reason why people drop out of OCS is because they're mentally weak. That's what I'm getting at. The reason why people drop at OCS is because they can't handle the lack of sleep. They can't handle being around other individuals telling them what to do. And now all of a sudden your academic suffers. But it's not because you're dumb. You've already proven that you're not. It's because you can't handle it up here. And this is what matters. PT, same thing. Push past the pain. If you're PT and you don't feel horrible and you don't get nervous before PT and, and you're not exhausted to the point of, of you're hallucinating, then you're probably not doing it right. You're not strengthening your mind. You know, it's fine to strengthen your body and you need that. But most important, you need here. You need to strengthen your mind to succeed at OCS. And I'm going to tell you right now, and this is going to be kind of controversial, but I firmly believe this. Whether people agree with me or not, it doesn't matter. I'm just going off of my experience and what I've seen. Let's take 100, 100 people at officer candidate school fail for medical. They get dropped for medical reasons. I'm going to tell you right now, 80 of those 100 quit. They quit. You feel a little bit of pain in your shoulder, you go to medical, you tell them you can't train because you feel pain, you get dropped. But now you have a little bit of self uh, integrity. You can look at yourself and say, you know, you know what, I didn't quit, but you quit. I've had candidates that were diagnosed with, uh, again, I'm not telling you to do this, but I've had candidates with torn meniscus, bad shoulders, not, not leaving here, but at officer candidate school, they got injured and they pushed. They pushed and they're now second lieutenants. When you see a medical drop, I'm telling you, again, this might be controversial. The majority of those medical drops are quitters. And there are going to be some people that are going to watch this video and it's going to apply to you. And you, and you should really dig in deep and, and determine, you know what, maybe I did quit. Maybe I could have pushed a little bit past that threshold of pain. But you didn't. You took the easy way out. Why? Because it was uncomfortable for you to be at OCS. So what I told my candidates this morning is if you have any mental strength, you're going to get over the academic portion. You're going to get over the PT portion. You're going to get over the medical portion. Everything OCS throws at you, you're going to be, you, you could get over. But how do you work on that? You work on it back home by putting yourself to some very tough physical fitness sessions. Every day you should do something that's tough. Uh, I made it a habit where we listen to uh, 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 a lot of like uh, David Goggins podcast. He talks about being mentally tough and developing that mental strength. Without that, guys, you're gonna fail. I had people from the top universities in the country fail in academics. I had people from Harvard with 3.8 GPAs fail academics. I've had guys with almost a 300 physical fitness tests fail at PT. And I've also had guys on the lower end of all those become second lieutenants. Why? Because they have what's stronger in here and here. This is what counts. This is what's gonna get you past that, that, that finishing point at officer candidate school. Believe it. Uh, those little pains and aches, get over them. Get over them now so that at OCS, it's just it's just another small ache and pain. That's the part you have to uh, believe in and, 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 and you have what it takes. You have what it takes. And I'm gonna leave you with this. I'm gonna give you an experience. I don't share this with anybody because to be honest with you, it's a, it's a little embarrassing. Uh, but again, I, I don't care about uh, impressing other people, but my goal is to help you understand where I'm coming from so that you can become a better individual than I ever was and become a better individual than any other candidates going with you. Back in 2001, uh, I was going through a, a Marine Corps water survival instructor course a long time ago. Uh, probably one of the toughest schools that I've been to. So it's three weeks of preconditioning and then you have the three weeks of the actu actual course. So three weeks of preconditioning this water course, uh, water survival course is very tough as far as like you almost get drowned every day. You have the instructors, they come jump on you, they drown you, it's horrible. And I remember during that time, uh, I developed a small pain in my knee. Small pain. Uh, if you can walk. Uh, it was a small, small pain in my knee. And, uh, and I was getting ready to go into the three week uh, actual course. But I kept thinking about how horrible it was going to be and how three weeks was going to last for so long and, 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 and I just didn't want to do it. So what I did is I went to medical and I told them and I complained about my knee. 
and and I was dropped. So when you look at all my stuff, I was dropped from my knee. But I'm telling you right now, guys, and I look at now as a grown man, and this was 2001, so we're looking at 17 years ago. I quit, and that moment has haunted me until this very day. Did it influence my, my career? I don't, I don't know, but it sure influenced my soul because I live with that decision. For the, I'm gonna have to live with it for the rest of my life that I quit. I quit Water Survivors because of my knee, uh, because I told myself that. So I'm telling you this is because you're gonna experience that at OCS. That person, that little freaking person on the side of your, uh, uh, on your shoulder telling you to quit, I'm telling you right now, you're going to experience. No matter who you are, I was a Marine of 14 years, gunnery sergeant, prior sergeant instructor, and I was experiencing that at OCS. But the moment that defines you, it's what you do at that moment where you have the option of either quitting or not. I'm telling you right now, time does not stop. You have what it takes to be a second lieutenant. Put the work in now, and 10 weeks is gonna go by faster than you ever know, and, 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 and it's gonna be worth it. You just can't quit. Get mentally tough. Any other questions, comment below. Hit me up at my email, carlos.dubon at marines.usmc.mil. If you're ever in the area, come out PT with us. We'll try to give you a, a small glimpse of, of what mental pain uh, and how to overcome that. Uh, and, 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 and all of you guys are invited. Other than that, uh, make sure you subscribe. And, and I hope to put out uh, uh, more videos here in the future in regards to some of that mental strength. Thank you.